In this video, I just wanted to talk a little bit about, again, some of the particular ways that we're going to be using D2L in this class. So the first thing to notice is that what you're looking at right now is the course homepage. This little announcements box is where I'm gonna be posting like sort of things that happen in the class. If there were to be a change to the schedule or a change to the readings, um, that would not only be noted on the course schedule, but it would also be noted in the announcements forum, right? So this is gonna be something that anytime you open and come to our particular class in D2L, you're gonna wanna like open your eyes and sort of like make sure you're paying attention to the announcements. The next thing that I wanted to draw your attention to, and this is actually a really, really, really important point, is that when you log in here, you're going to see these upcoming events on the course calendar. What I want to highlight is that while it is almost always the case that the upcoming events will be tracking the sort of like next week or so of what's happening in the class, this is not the exhaustive list of all of the things that you need to do. The reason that I do that is that I tend to open up things in batches um, and I like in part I do that because I want to be able to make changes on the basis of things that have happened previously in the class. So I don't really have like this kind of canned approach to the course. Instead, um, I try to make every course, like you know, every time I teach the course, like a little bit different because people will focus on different kinds of things. Our discussions will take us into different kinds of directions. And so I want to have a little bit of flexibility in how it is that we're sort of structuring that to go. That does not mean that you have no sense of what's coming up or how the overall course, like the overall session is going to be structured. Instead, what you need to be focusing on is going into the content section of D2L, and you're gonna be needing to focus on this document, getting started the schedule. So this is the PDF schedule for our entire class, and that is going to be broken down per day. So the first day of class is March 11th, that's on this Monday here. This is the 12th, the 13th, 14th, 15th, right? And I even have Saturday and Sunday in there, although it's never the case that there's really anything that sort of is due or happens on those. I just like to kind of have everything sort of bracketed out as if you were sort of like looking at a monthly calendar. And then the items for each day are going to be listed um, in, in on the day that they happen. I realize that something like Unit 2, Ancient Book Opens, doesn't give you a lot of information. That's because if you scroll down, you can see that each of the modules has much more sort of broken down in depth, kind of what's gonna be sort of included in each module. That's also included in um, the D2L module overviews, but this is the map of basically how the session is going to be structured throughout the entire session, right? So all of the due dates, everything is listed in advance, um, it's just that it's not always going to be available in the D2L calendar. So this is a, this is like a document that you're probably going to want to like print out and have on hand. It's possible that there might be some changes to the schedule. If that happened, what I would do would actually be to edit this document in red. I would upload the new version. You'd get a notification here. And again, I would also post an announcement into the sort of like regular announcement page. So it would never be the case that something like really should be a big surprise to you if there were a change to that. But I always really like to flag that, you know, if you're just going off of the sort of D2L course calendar, it's not going to be exhaustive. So if you knew that, say, you were going to be going out of town in two weeks, don't be looking at this calendar. Make sure that you're paying attention to the PDF one um, and sort of planning accordingly or letting me know if you need to make different kinds of accommodations, right? This is gonna be the master schedule and this has all of the dates and all of the information that's available on there. The other thing that I like to point out about particularly what I sort of hope that students are going to be doing with D2L is to be going into the discussion section and we see this course questions administrative forum. You're never required to post to the course questions forum. The course questions forum tends to be a little bit faster response than my email. Um, I often try to like kind of divide my day up and say like, okay, well, what I'm trying to do right now is focus on my teaching. So I'm not gonna look on email because then I get, you know, like I get lots of emails from like, you know, curriculum committees or other kind of university committees or other sorts of like, just like weird 
university emails that come through. And if I'm sort of constantly managing that, then I don't devote all of my attention to sort of the class that I'm focusing on at that time. But if I'm doing that and I get a sort of ping in the course questions forum, then of course I'm always gonna answer that right away. Um, that's also kind of nice too because what I think everyone should be doing is to clicking on this little arrow, going into subscribe, um, and I tend to say send me an instant notification. These notifications are sent only via email and not SMS messaging. Some, if you have Gmail, for instance, you can actually get it to send you a text message if you get an email from someone. But um, I don't think students need to do that. I think it's fine to get an instant notification here. You can subscribe. Um, and then anytime there's a post to this course questions forum, you'll get a little ping in your email. Um, you know, because students aren't necessarily required to post there, I tend to think that what ends up happening is that the information and the questions that get posted here are usually questions that are going to be shared by other students. So this is a really great way for us to sort of share resources and information between ourselves. Because the other thing that you can do with the course question forums is if you have a question and you sort of post it to the forum, say you had a question about like, hey, I can't find this, or I'm confused about what like the chapter name that we're reading, like I, I didn't see it, like did I miss the book, like what's going on, where do I find this? Um, suppose I'm in like a day where I just have like meeting after meeting after meeting and so I can't get to my email or my computer but you post the question to the discussion forum and then one of your peers sees it and goes oh I know where that is and then they can respond right so um, I strongly encourage us all to sort of help each other out um, kind of create like a little bit of more of a community where everyone can be answering um, I really appreciate it when students help me out in that way because like I say, like sometimes I'm just like locked in meetings for a few hours um, and can't get to my computer or can't respond. So it's really nice if we can do that and we can sort of share information, information in that way. Um, I do know that that should definitely be reserved for things that would be you know, of interest to the entire class. So like location of content, if you had a question about requirements for an assignment, um, those would be the kinds of things that you could post here. But if you had a question that was really specific to your situation, so you needed to make pre-arrangements for an extension, like you know you're gonna go out of town, or you had a question about your grade on an assignment, those would be the kinds of things that you really will want to email me directly about. Um, but again, I strongly recommend that everyone subscribes to this forum because it's a really great way for us to share information. And if someone posts to something and you know the answer, please do respond as well because you know I think it really does help us all out if we can be sharing information as much as we have it. I think that is it for the particulars of how it is that we're gonna be using um, D2L. If you have any other specific questions about D2L or you're just sort of unfamiliar with it or with VoiceThread, please do let me know. Um, I'm always happy to sort of follow up. And we can also schedule um, appointments where we can use Google Hangouts um, or Zoom to screen share. Um, and that's also like a really helpful way to sort of troubleshoot and kind of work through different kinds of technological problems. Um, thank you.